Okay, in today's video we're going to be talking, among other things, uh, the role of the New World Order in the end times. And this is a very big subject and um, Revelation does talk about this, believe it or not. Uh, a second question we could ask then, it, will the New World Order be a part of the beast empire, or the beast system, the beast kingdom. Will the new world order have a place in his kingdom? And sort of a, a follow-up question is, what is the relationship of the antichrist or beast with the new world order? What, what kind of a arrangement do they have? And how is Satan working all of this um, to further his agenda? I know a lot of people out there believe that the things that they see going on in the world right now with the New World Order uh, that looks like it's rising to the fore, they see the things that are happening and they equate them with the things that the Beast or the Antichrist is going to be doing during his reign. Now, I'm going to tell you up front, he's going to use some of the things that the New World Order has sort of brought into existence, um, actually as a result of, I believe, dark spiritual forces that have allowed this to happen. But what Satan is really going to do is he's going to create his controlled opposition. He has been using the New World Order for his purposes for, you know, thousands of years. Actually, the New World Order is the same Old World Order that we saw way back in Babel with the Tower of Babel and Nimrod. Um, Mystery Babylon, the whole Babylonian mystery religions, the whole uh, system of control that was set up by uh, this Babylonian style of, of government, um, government <laughs> that is essentially religious in nature, just so you know. So even though there are what we would think of as being secular aspects to this whole mystery religion thing like education, for example, doesn't seem to have anything to do with religion, but actually it does. Medicine, um, science, all of that are actually at their foundation. They're religious in nature. They have a uh, belief system. It's faith-based at some level where you believe what people are telling you. All, all of the world systems right now are part of this old world order slash what we call the new world order. This is all a part of the Babylonian system. It's all part of Mystery Babylon. In my book, I talk a lot about the harlot and how she's been around for a long time and the harlot has infiltrated even Christianity. Most Christian churches, if not perhaps all of the bought into the 501c3 thing, have some element of compromise in them. They have a lot of truth. There's a lot of things that you can learn about the Lord, but you may not uh, get the full truth in a lot of these places because of the compromise that has gone on. And a lot of people who get into it have no idea. Okay, They have no idea where all of this comes from. Anyway, I don't want to get into that too much. So before we actually look at the bottom line of what is the role of the New World Order in the end times, I want to go back to Genesis, okay, because that's the foundation for all the things that we see happening in the world today. So in the middle of the Garden of Eden, God placed two trees. One was the tree of life, and the other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were to eat from the tree of life. That was totally fine. We know the story. Satan tempted Eve. Eve was deceived. She ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then she offered some of the fruit to her husband. He ate too. And the world has been in a sorry state ever since. Uh, access to the tree of life was forbidden, lest people live forever in a sinful state. What has happened, though, is really interesting. Once the tree of life was sort of taken out of the picture, all we're left with, then, is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So on this tree, okay, this is, this is my little tree here, uh, there are two branches. We see a branch of good and people trying to do good, and the branch of evil, People trying to avoid the evil and only do the good. If you're um, part of the uh, Kabbalah, you can achieve 
life, okay, they, they call this kind of the tree of life. It's not. It's the tree of death, actually. There's a path that you can take. That's the good path, and there's the path you can take. That's the uh, evil path, but either way, you're going to arrive at enlightenment or whatever it is. Now, the problem is that it doesn't matter what you are doing, okay? If you're trying to be really, really good or you're you're going to take the other path and you're going to be really, really bad, uh, if you eat from this tree, you're going to die. But what Satan has basically done, he's taken this tree and he's made this tree the tree of life, okay, in, in terms of what people think okay so you're going to achieve life by one of these paths okay and most people go for the good side that if you're good enough you're going to make it into heaven you're going to be a good person now what people don't understand was there is a second tree and that's the tree of life okay and this is the tree that you know we're to eat from okay this is this is Christ he is our life Anybody who eats off of this tree is going to die, but if you come to Christ, you will live, okay, and you will be allowed to eat from the tree of life. To have the privilege to eat from the tree of life, we come to Christ, we give him our sinful nature, um, he offers us the atoning sacrifice, the work that he did on the cross, that's our substitute for our um, sins and our misdeeds and, and our fallen nature, and then he gives to us life from the spirit that is imparted to us so he gives us then his life which is placed inside of us so a few years ago uh, God spoke to me about this and I was out picking raspberries or something working in my garden and all of a sudden I hear the voice of the Lord speaking to me on the inside and he says you know Brenda it's not about good versus evil and I'm like you know, all of a sudden surprised that the Lord is just speaking to me just out of the blue. And I'm like, well, what do you, what do you mean? It's not about good versus evil. That life isn't about good versus evil, trying to be good. And, you know, and then I, I thought to like these superhero movies where they have the good guys and then they have the bad guys and they battle it out to see who's going to win. And of course you hope the good wins and all of that. And, and I said, I don't know, what, what are you talking about that it, whatever it is, life, is not about good versus evil. He says, it's about life and death. And all of a sudden, my mind went back to the Garden of Eden, to the tree that it didn't matter if you ate from the good side or the evil side, that it would lead to your death. That the only tree that leads to life is the tree of life. And what Satan wants us to do is to forget about this tree, forget about how to achieve eternal life, not know about this, pretend like it doesn't exist. So what Satan has done then is he's come up with a kind of duality and he's sort of brainwashed us into thinking that Christianity or all of you know the world is about good versus evil. We want to be on the right side of a war, we want to do what's good, um, and that can, what's good can be different according to who you are, you know. For some people, doing the right thing and being good is smashing windows. They think this will achieve a, a change in society for the better. So you can see people's ideas about what constitutes good and what constitutes evil is a little skewed. And that's why the Lord gave us the commandments, the Ten Commandments, so we could at least know the kinds of things that are pleasing to God, the things that are good, and try to do the things that are good as opposed to doing the things that are evil. So how does this play into the end time? So we know that the devil goes by a couple of different names, right? He's He can be Lucifer the light bearer, or he can be Satan the accuser. And people who are part of the New Age movement view Lucifer as the good guy, okay? And actually God is the bad guy, or, you know, Satan might be a dark force too. What Satan is going to do in the end times is he is going to set up a, um, a duality. He's going to create controlled opposition, okay? If you can create the opposition, you can control it. So what he's done for the past few thousand years is he's created controlled opposition. And we would call this the New World Order or uh, Babylonian religion. Or, or the harlot. Okay, and this is all a system of control. Okay, you have to understand that the bottom line of all this is control. 
It's controlling the world, whether you're controlling the finances of the world, you're controlling the medicine of the world, the food of the world, <laughs> uh, the opinions of the world. Everything about the New World Order, the Babylonian harlot system, is about control. That's the bottom line. So what Satan has done is he set up uh, a system that looks kind of like a pyramid, okay, with the people in the know at the top and the sheep at the bottom who don't know anything. And it's the people at the top that control what's going on. So this world right now is under the control and influence of Satan. He's using this organization, this group, who's been around since forever, okay, since Old Testament times, since Genesis. He's using this system. He is making this system be the bad guy. Okay, This system is going to be seen wearing the black hat. Right? The harlot system, the new world order system, is going to be seen as the bad guy. So increasingly, as the days go on, what we're going to see is more and more evidence that this cabal, the new world order, this harlot Babylonian system of control has done us wrong. Okay, they've controlled the financial situation and now everybody's uh, poor. Nations are like in debt up past their eyeballs. Personal debt is way over the top. You've got central banks controlling things. You've got fiat currency, you know, um, the Federal Reserve. You've got all kinds of things that are part of this control system, American Medical Association. You've got all kinds of the education system. All of this is part of the control that's under the New World Order. And increasingly, what we're going to see is these people are the bad guys. These people are the bad guys. The good guy is going to be the Antichrist. So if this is the, the bad system and the bad guy wearing the, ba the black hat, who's the one wearing the white hat? That's going to be the Antichrist with the white hat. Okay, some of you may not be old enough to know what I'm talking about with a black hat and a white hat. If you watched an old spaghetti western, the good guys always wore white hats. The bad guys always wore a black hat. Okay, that's how you could tell them apart um, if you didn't couldn't tell just by looking at them. Okay, so the white hat is going to be the Antichrist. He's going to come on the scene as being a good guy. All right, so how does this work? One of the things that I always found really interesting in the book of Revelation is how much emphasis is put on the harlot, okay? The harlot is the one who is said to be drunk with the blood of the saints. The beast, or the Antichrist, is never said to be drunk with the blood of the saints. He will behead Christians, but he is not drunk with the blood of the saints. The entity that is going to kill most Christians is actually the harlot, right? Not the beast. And remember, it's the harlot that rides the beast, which means she's in control. And she's in control during the first half of the seven years. Okay, so here's our timeline. Midpoint. This is the beginning. This is the second coming of Christ at the end. Okay. The scarlet beast is ridden by the harlot up until sometime just before the midpoint. And after that, it's the beast who rises from the sea or the beast who ascends from the bottomless pit who's in control for the rest of this time. And there's no harlot because the beast hates the harlot and he destroys her with uh, fire, smoke, and sulfur at the sixth trumpet right here. Sometime before this point, when the harlot's destroyed, um, the harlot is going to kill millions and millions of believers. And it, it'll be during a 10-day window of persecution. This is after the first rapture, after we're gone. And many, many, many millions of people will come to Christ. There'll be so many people that come to Christ that it'll be the new world order versus Believers, this system is a system of control. If you can't control these guys, you better get rid of them. And that's what they'll do. They're going to murder um, Christians. They're going to incite the earth dwellers, people who live on the earth, to kill believers. This is going to be a purge. That's why we have all this predictive programming about a purge. That's what's going to be coming. People who live on the earth okay, don't like either one of these guys. Okay, the earth dwellers really don't like the new world order control and they don't like believers either. 
Now, the Antichrist, okay, doesn't like the harlot, the New World Order, and he doesn't like believers. He's going to let the New World Order, also known as the harlot, Mystery Babylon, kill believers. Then you got rid of one. And then, at the midpoint, um, when the abomination of desolation takes place, that's when he takes out the harlot, the New World Order. Now, you have to understand, the earth dwellers don't like the New World Order either. The fact that the Antichrist is able to get 10 kings and a 200 million man army to kill a third of the earth means most of the world is going to be fed up with these people who are in positions of power and control. Revelation 18 talks about the destruction of the harlot, the destruction of the New World Order. Kings of the earth, the rich men, the merchants, the people who make money transporting all these goods. These are the people that it's going to affect. They are going to be very, very unhappy. Why? They thought they were going to have a place in the beast empire, the beast kingdom. The fact is, they are not going to have a place in that empire. The beast will not use these people. He does not want them. He doesn't like them. That's the people who've been writing him. He doesn't like them. He doesn't want them. He will use them, though, to get rid of believers who he also hates. All right, so let's say now that you're someone who gets saved, okay, back here somewhere after the first rapture. Uh, you manage to make it through the purge. You're not killed. You come to the other side of the, um, right at the time of the midpoint, the Antichrist is taking a seat in the temple of God. And all of a sudden you realize that he is killing the people who killed your friends. That he is totally wiping out the new world order. He is getting rid of all the people who murdered your family, your friends, the people who love Jesus, who were martyred back here. And you see this, this man, he has also uh, been killed... Um, by the two witnesses, and then he has uh, risen from the dead. He's alive, okay? And he now puts an end to the system that wiped out your family. I mean, he, like, totally wipes it out. So if someone were to ask you, um, what do you think about the New World Order? How do you feel about it? You know, if you're a Christian or someone who's, you know, in the know or is, is awake at this point, you go, well, the New World Order is terrible. It's awful, and it's, uh, it's anti-Christ, it's anti-God, it's got a system of evil that's just terrible. You know, it's going to make Christians do things they don't want to do, and all of that, okay? So if you were to ask a Christian, you know, how do you feel about the New World Order, you would say, it's bad. Now, let's say you get to the other side of this, you know, you made it without being killed in the 10-day purge. And this man comes along, kills all the people who killed people like you, who killed Christians. I think I'd be a little confused. And then if I saw that he died and rose from the dead, I think I'd be a lot confused. I would be a lot confused. So what Satan is going to do here is he's going to, he creates his own uh, bad guy in the form of the harlot so he can get rid of her and come off as the good guy as the Antichrist. The Antichrist does martyr people. He does require things from people, but he is not drunk with the blood of the saints. All of that is placed on the harlot. The Antichrist lets the harlot do his dirty work and then he gets rid of the harlot and he starts looking like the good guy and it's planned that way because partially we've been led down the primrose path to think of things in terms of a duality, good or evil. You're either the good guy or you're the bad guy. And there's only two, okay? The fact is, these are both bad guys. So there's a saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And if the enemy of my enemy becomes my friend during the time of the end, uh, you're going to be in big trouble. Neither one of these people are your friends. Neither one. And part of the deception will be because people have been sucked into this 
false dichotomy of good versus evil. So if you can control who the good guys are and you can control who the bad guys are, you are in control of the whole thing. You control the whole system. So when Jesus says that there are false Christs who will arise and they're going to do all these magnificent things, they're going to be very deceptive in their operation. They're going to show signs and miracles, which that's definitely going to happen at the midpoint there for sure with the false prophet calling fire down. I believe that's going to ignite the sacrifice for the Antichrist. But one of the things that Christians are buying into that is really a problem, and it's going to be a problem if this gets carried over into the time after we're gone, and that is believing in this duality, that the New World Order is our enemy, and then when someone comes on the scene and totally does away with a system that's been in existence for thousands of years and sets up a new kingdom of amazing stuff, it's going to be very difficult to believe that he's the bad guy. And they may be sucked into the deception that because he died and he rose from the dead, because he has all these great signs that accompany him, because he's going to start doing all these amazing things, that he is the good guy. So somewhere during the next few months, the New World Order is going to get a lot of bad press. And people are going to hate some of the things that the New World Order is doing, what they're insisting upon. Not just believers, but other people as well, especially when it comes to things like banking and the economy and even, even maybe the medical industry. So the New World Order isn't going to be seen as being a good thing. A lot of people, even non-believers, are going to want to see the demise and destruction of that entity. And this is where a, a lot of confusion is going to come into play. And if believers are confusing the New World Order with the beast, oh dear, okay, the New World Order is not going to be a part of this system. It's not a part of it at all. It's a whole nother thing. So if the New World Order is destroyed and the Christ comes out of it, and people think that the, the Antichrist and the New World Order were one and the same, then when the Antichrist comes on the scene, it's going to seem like the Christ has come on the scene. So, did you follow me there? That if we equate the New World Order with the Antichrist, and then another guy comes on the scene and puts down this Antichrist New World Order, we're going to think that this is the Christ. That people who are Christians who are alive at the end are going to think this is the Christ. It's so diabolically deceptive. It's so incredible what Satan has done to confuse believers about the identity of these two systems. They are not the same. They're not the same system. They should never be confused with one another. The New World Order will never be a part of the Antichrist system. In fact, that's why all the rich men are weeping in uh, Revelation chapter 18, because they are not a part of what's going to happen. They are going to think, oh, we're sitting pretty. A widow, I will never be. I'm never going to see that. I'm going to be a part of this new thing that's coming into existence. I'm going to be a part of this beast empire. And, of course, they won't. They will not be a part of that. They will be taken out. So, really, be super careful. Do not talk about the New World Order as being a part of the beast system. Because if you do, people will be confused. Believers and other believers who come after us, the people who will come to Christ after us, are going to think the New World Order and the beast are the same thing. And then when this system is destroyed, they'll think that Christ did it. Now, God is behind it. He's going to use the Antichrist to destroy that system. But the Antichrist is not Christ. Christ will not come until uh, the very end. And he will come just before the day of the Lord um, to take that third group, that last group of people who have to survive the reign of the beast without taking the mark and without being beheaded.
So let me know what you think about this, and uh, we'll see you on another video. Till then, have a very blessed day.